in higher technical and vocational education joint with um I mean joint back, huh? Joint with the Committees on Public Services and Ways and Means and Finance is hereby resumed. Um Chair would like to say to acknowledge um Chair would like to instruct the Secretary to kindly acknowledge the presence of our guests both online and um physically present. Claire, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning to our um, resource persons this morning. Um, let me acknowledge the presence of the following. From the Commission on Higher Education, we have Executive Director Cinderella Haro. Good morning, ma'am. We have Attorney Peter Lloyd Carpio. Director Efren Abulensha. Okay, Dr. Efren Abulensha. So, sorry, sir. Of what? Um, Chen. Uh, Director Raul Muyong and Ms. Rita Sescar. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have Ms. Joy R. Rico. From the Philippine... Yes, 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 yes. No, I don't Um, to continue, Mr. Chair, we have from the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy, we have su its superintendent, Commodore Joel Abutal. Morning, sir. From the, we also have with us um, online, Mr. Chair, from Eastern Summer State University, Dr. Andresi Pagatpatan. From the San Pedro Technical Institute, we have... Uh, Dr. Mary Beth F. Salazar. From the Makilala Institute of, of Science and Technology, we have Mr. Jerry Rigunan. From the Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, we have Dr. Rodora Hugo, Dr. Feliciana Jacoba, Engineer Honorato Panahon, Dr. Rachel Moralde, and Dr. Marlon Rufino. Can someone... Sinin tige NU N E U S T. Um, Asin acknowledgement. Yes, pa. Online. Yes, pa. Ah, net. Um, um, from the Zamboanga del Sur School of Arts and Trades, we have Mr. Augusto Havenia. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Miss Janelisa Espinosa, Attorney Phoebe Samantha Alamigos. Miss Anne Michelle Andres and Miss Hajeline Javier. Uh, from the Aurora State College of Technology, we have Dr. UTQL Rotacchio. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, and thank you for taking time out to be with us in today's um, in this morning's hearing. Um, please don't be overwhelmed with the number of bills we'll be taking up. Chad is used to me already, but for those who are new to my committee hearings, um, we will be able to finish this well before lunch. Dahil wala kaming hinundang lunch para sa inyo. Um, so let's proceed. Um, taking it, taking it chronologically as it appears in the agenda. Um, I have read all of the bills and know what to do and would simply seek um, affirmation and confirmation from you with respect to the things that needs to be done, if at all. Um, so we can proceed directly. Um, item A, House Bill Number 9292, um, an act mandating the inclusion of a personal literacy, financial literacy course in the tech book, um, in the in the in the in TESDA and training curriculum of tech block institutions and technology. Um, um, thank you for being with us this morning. At least Mera Sangay Lumumbas na opisina from BSP. But um, it has been the policy of this committee um, since I became chair that we will not legislate any um, item in any curriculum of any course simply because curricula should not be etched in stone via a law which will be difficult to change. In fact, I have been batting for changing the curriculum to make our graduates um, more competitive and not simply trained to pass board exams or bar exams, which are at best archaic. Um, so if at all, what we will do with this House bill is to convert it into a resolution urging TESDA to include financial literacy and whatever items, other items mentioned in the House bill, House bill number 9292. 
so that it's merely um, recommendatory and not mandatory. Secretary is directed to convert House Bill number 9292 into a resolution urging TESDA to that effect. So ordered. Item B, um, item number two rather, um, Philippine National Maritime Academy Charter. Converting the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy into the Philippine National Maritime Academy is the primary institution for basic and continuing higher education and training of maritime professionals and leaders for national development and security and other purposes. Chair for this purpose recognizes um, um, Commodore Abutal, sir, for your remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Uh, firstly, uh, thank you so much for inviting us and together with me are the executives of the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy, the two assistant superintendents, including the uh, uh, president of the PMMA Alumni Association, and uh, to all our fellow uh, workers in the government here and uh, those online. The uh, PMMA sincerely appreciates po Senator Tol, Francis Tol Tolentino for filing the bill Senate number 2469 to strengthen the PMMA and submits our positions as follows. The uh, PMMA leadership and the community strongly supports the immediate enactment of Senate Bill number 2469, an act converting the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy into Philippine National Maritime Academy, PNMA as the primary institution for the basic and continuing higher education and training of maritime professionals and leaders for national development and security and for other purposes, as introduced by Senator Francis Toll and Tolentino. Um, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines po is a marine and an archipelagic state. And waters has always been the medium of our physical unity as a nation. Our marine environment as a source of food, energy, and highway for commerce and communications, while the ocean is a means of our social activities, tourism, and recreation. The Philippines can only maximize benefits from its marine assets and resources if it has a big pool of marine-based human resource. Based on the data of the Philippine Statistical Authority and the International Maritime Organization, Filipinos account for about 380,000 or more of the 1.5 seafarers worldwide. Filipino sea-based workers' remittances contribute to at least 20% or approximately 6 billion of the total OFW remittances. That is only the regular remittances, not including the pay they get while they're on board. So it can go as much as 10 billion, uh, Mr. Chair, annually. This is a global market position that we must defend and sustain by providing quality education and training programs for Filipino maritime professionals. We believe that this House Senate bill will provide a conducive policy environment and the legal mandate for the expansion of the maritime education and training programs currently being offered by the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy. We further believe that the Philippine maritime industry is vital for national development and security, and the country needs a well-developed domestic and international shipping and modern shipbuilding and ship repair industry. We must treat the maritime industry, not just a strategic addition to the current economic activities of the country. Rather, we must treat it as a fulcrum and the primary focus of our economic initiatives. The maritime industry is also vital for the promotion of our national security, particularly in developing a credible 
maritime defense capability. Without a well-developed and progressive maritime industry protecting our maritime interests in both na territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone could not be guaranteed. We are glad to note that at present, we have an internationally competitive and preferred seafarers manning ocean-going vessels. However, Mr. Chair, the maritime industry needs more than just internationally competitive seafarers. As an archipelagic and maritime nation, the Philippines must play a critical role in facilitating global trade by serving as the trading hub for international trade, just like Singapore, Hong Kong, and the likes. For this to happen, the country needs naval architects and engineers, maritime business professionals, and maritime security and law enforcement officers, port operators, maritime logistic professionals, as well as the IT professionals for maritime cybersecurity. We also need highly skilled welders to support the local shipbuilding industry. Considering our security challenges in the West Philippine Sea and the changing legal regimes governing the oceans brought by the coming into force of the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, in which the Philippines as a signatory, thus the country needs maritime lawyers who are not only experts in international relations, but are also experts in internal law, particularly on the legal regimes governing the ocean. And particularly also, Mr. Chair, with the recently approval by the Senate of the maritime uh, law zones. Section five of the bill, which allows the PNMA to expand its curricular offerings to include courses such as maritime business, maritime administration, port and shipyard management, naval engineering, electrotechnology, aut technology, automation, robotics, artificial intelligence, autonomous ships and digitalization, as well as technical vocational and training courses and short training courses that may support maritime industry in terms of technical safety and security. It is vital for our country if it is to play a critical role in facilitating global trade and to become a trading hub in the Asia Pacific region. On the other hand, courses on maritime law enforcement, marine environmental protection, maritime security, and international relations will capacitate our bureaucracy, which will allow relevant government agencies to address challenges and capture opportunities in our maritime jurisdiction. Mr. Chair, in 1994, Marine Policy Act, which was updated in 2018, proposes the establishment of a prosperous archipelagic State, Philippine state characterized by well-developed a marine or ocean-based industrialized economy supported by an integrated and global maritime industry with ships built, owned, operated, and manned by Filipinos that connects lands and people, creates wealth, and generates jobs for economic progress and national security. We believe Sir Chair, that the transformation of the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy to become the Philippine National Maritime Academy with expanded mandate and authority could help in paving the way for the realization of the national vision set forth in our national marine policy, also as embodied in the Maritime Industry Development Plan as recently signed by our president. So move and pray, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you, sir. Um, sir, did this bill come from you? 
Or are you commenting only on the bill based on your letter dated? Uh, it is. It came from us, sir. Uh, most of the parts, sir. Um, your suggested amendments and corrections are all well taken, but I have some questions. Um, what is the term of office of the superintendent? If it came from you, because it is silent in the bill. Uh, yes, sir. The term of office, uh, as of now, is uh, similar to the SUC president. Uh, it doesn't years. say it here. Uh, we did not say it. So Why? It's still the same, sir. I think. Um, so it's supposed to be for a term of four years. Uh, for the for a term of four years. And uh, based on the current condition of Agree, the... but why did it not state it here? Yeah. But hindi ho nakalagay? Um, I think it's uh, up to the uh, uh, next board set to, de to decide. Because uh, it's, uh, uh, decide uh, the term. It has to be in the law. Um, it has to be in the law. And you cannot use as basis if at all said policy or the or the or the or, or the practice with soaps that is four years because you're being granted institutional autonomy like up the term of yes. the president is not four it's six without re-election yeah. um, my next if, question yes. is if it's four years yes. you said 40 not not young not um, above 40 years old but not beyond 65 come four years the 69 na siya. What was the intention? I mean, yes, sir. So kindly clarify that. What's yes, your the, position on um, that? We did not uh, place the uh, uh, the term as uh, we think that it should be the same as what we are having now. For four years uh, with two terms. Uh, on the basis of uh, what we think is uh, um, 40 years is the prime. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Agree. Uh, what about 65? What about um, not over 65? Pag in-elect yes. ng 65, edi matatapos siya ng 69. Akala yan. Um, Presumably, retiring age, retirement age na yung 65. So, paano? May I ask, Chad, an elected universe, state university or college president that goes beyond the retirement age, is that allowed? Um, under the law, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, it is allowed, provided that it should be uh, there should be an outstanding, um, outstanding, ano po, outstanding na mark, both from the search outstanding committee, what? outstanding, um, uh, the outstanding mark from the search committee for the evaluation committee, and it should be approved, of course, by the board, uh, Mr. Chair, but it should not be more than seventy po, based on R A eight two ninety two. Hindi siya dapat mag-exceed ng seventy. Apa. Why? What's your basis? Uh, so R A to two ninety two, Mr. Chair, uh, explicitly provided po na uh, it should not. So okay, lang sixty five hanggang magserve hanggang sixty nine. Okay, lang yung forty to sixty five. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, based po sa law po. And I will put here four years because we cannot leave it hanging. Specifically, I'm referring to section eight. The term of the superintendent must be specified. Now, what we have now, uh, Mr. Chair, is uh, uh, four years, first four years, first term, uh, with the uh, uh, possibility of reappointment to second term. Of another reappointment board. by the board, right? By the board. So let's reflect that in Section 8. Kindly take note. Kindly take note of the proposed amendments as well of um, the PMMA. And on the part of the chair, before I recognize Ched, um, Section 26 on transitory provisions. Um, kindly reword this. Hindi naman transitory provision to eh. Organizational structure to eh. Subject to style. And kindly include the phrase that DBM shall act on this within 30 days. Chad, your comments on this bill? Um, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I will no longer dwell on the importance of maritime education, but there are two main areas that we you have... You will dwell on institutional autonomy. Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, institutional autonomy and um, that it will be outside the regulatory control of Chad and Marina and the term national, Mr. Chair. Um, 
dun sa institutional autonomy and outside the regulatory control of Ched and Marina, we have three points that we would like to raise, Mr. Chair. One is as, as to institutional recognition. One is to as to institutional autonomy, the concept of institutional autonomy and the quality assured programs. For institutional recognition, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I think that would have an impact on our institutional recognition with internationally accredited, with international bodies, uh, such as EU, Mr. Chair, and the IMO. In fact, Mr. Chair, in the previous, um, uh, previous... Let me um, you there, ma'am. It's funny you brought that up because the problem right now of maritime schools is that IMO and EU does not recognize CHED. It's Marina that they recognize. And yeah. it's the intervention of CHED actually that has no core competence with respect to this that's actually creating problems abroad for our sea terrors. Um, so my choice here is either give them institutional autonomy or give it to Marina, which I don't want to do. Uh, <laughs> no, which I don't yeah. want to do. Um, if I may proceed, I uh, may proceed, Mr. Mr. Chair. So, um, as I've mentioned, sir, you know, well, you, you have reservations for us to Marina's, uh, uh, consider uh, not 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 and the pushing single maritime in the now, uh, in, now the maritime schools are in limbo. Huh? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, what I'm ask, uh, what I'm pointing out, like Mr. Chair, when we were recognized by the European Union, it was the effort. It was the joint effort of well. I would say, I would claim, of Marina and Ched, uh, Mr. Chair, because we were part pa rin po of... Locally, yes. Yeah, po, we were part pa rin po of um, the uh, efforts, Mr. Chair. Uh, if we will include one body again, because under this law, they would be allowed to graduate maritime, um, graduates of maritime uh, transportation and maritime engineering. So that would have a problem with respect to our, to the recognition. And... Um, in the IMO, Mr. Chair, that is what we have also presented to, to the body that uh, it is well, Marina, Marina taking the lead in co in coordination or in consultation with CHED, which governs maritime education. And if there is one, um, well, one body that will be allowed to produce graduates, Mr. Chair, outside of that system or structure, I think. That would have repercussions on our position to be included in the white list of IMO, Mr. Chair. And as to the concept of institutional autonomy, um, Mr. Chair, um, after the after the bill on um, I think the bill of PUP, which was vetoed for institutional autonomy in the Commission, we have already created a technical working group. No, which we would, remove that. Uh, we remove that for PUP. Oh yes. Okay, okay. Okay, Paul. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, and if I may... We remove that for PUP. Okay. Our version. Ah, okay. Ah, wala na. Bye-bye. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, please proceed. Okay, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, and then as to quality assured programs, Mr. Chair, in fact, in the previous... Uh, Previous evaluation also of EMSA. There are observations also raised by Good. EMSA against PMMA, uh, and then also with our Ched, uh, the monitoring of Ched and Marina, Mr. Chair. There are also some deficiencies which we have also observed uh, in PMMA. So it must be established, Mr. Chair, that there's really a structure with respect to maritime education and having them be removed on that structure would one of one of the one of the the reason why I'm actually interested in this bill is that it will finally clarify one way or the other is it cheddar marina the dichotomy cannot go on now you have to understand that yeah now if you say Ched is doing a good job with respect to the PMMA and the maritime schools well Ched continues to recognize and have not closed down schools that don't have ships, that continue to enroll students who will never board a ship because they're not qualified. And that's ongoing right now. So at the end of the day, it has to be done one way or the other. And actually that Marina will sit, that you will sit in the board, might be something that we can experiment with. Instead of, um, instead of, um, parang pinuputbol niyo yung do you know, do you, do you know, ma'am, that the Philippines is one of 
the very few countries in the world that has more than one maritime school. How many do we have? Do you know? Yes, Mr. Sheer, as of now, po, uh, 83. We have 83 exactly. uh, maritime higher Ganun education. Ganun tayo ka-proficient sa pag-produce ng CFR. Ganun karami yung skwelahan natin. And of the 83, do you even have the figures? How many of them actually graduate qualified to board a ship? And um, today, uh, we have maritime schools that don't have ships. Then they continue getting students, enrolling students. They're paying the tuition fee without any chance of boarding a ship ever unless they transfer to a school with a ship. And why is Chet allowing that? I don't um, understand that. Huh? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I recognize that fact, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's one of the areas po talaga that... Uh, that that has to be resolved by Marina and Ched. In fact, Mr. Chair, yung issue po ng sh uh, shipboarding has also been um, one of the points raised by EU when it gave its recognition po. Yes. I'm so Mr. Chair. sorry, ma'am. If Ched is saying that you're the guardian of making sure that seafarers will actually land the job and be accredited, Ched hasn't really done a good job at it for the past decades. So, again, while it is true that this may be an exception to the rule, the leaning of the chair is towards experimenting with this kind of arrangement where both Marina, as I said, and Shed will be there. Because Marina, both Marina and Shed, you don't have a sterling track record, I mean, admittedly, of being able to police, be the guardian of, and ensure that indeed all of these maritime schools are compliant because they have not been compliant. And apparently nothing is being done about it. In fact, in the, seafare, in, the, in the Magna Carta for seafarers, I insisted on removing the provision that these schools be given two more years to comply by way of getting a ship. Why? Utang na loob naman. Dalawang taong pa magabahay doon yung mga estudyante ron. Kawawa naman doon yung mga estudyante. Mas kawawa sila kung matapos sila ng ilang taon na hindi naman talaga magkakatrabaho. Diba? It, it begs the question. So, how many schools have been closed? Ordered closed by Chet? Uh, Mr. Chair, when uh, Chair De Vera assumed office, po, seven seven institutions, but from ninety, so we were able, uh, we issued uh, face out orders. Oh, po. Are those face out orders being implemented already? Yes, Mr. Chair, because there was a directive to that uh, face out orders that they could no longer accept first year students, Mr. Chair. So and we have implemented of it. Thirty three. member ko. Ilan po sir ang ang member ko? Um, mm. I don't. No, ngayon, Mr. Chair, but I would say less than 20 po, siguro less than 10. Actually, hindi sa sobra sa limang daliri ng kamay ko eh. Totoo naman po. Um, I think it was, <laughs> it's a uh, ma-up, ma-up po siguro. Ay, ano, um, the, John, B, John B. Lacson, ma-up, uh, and then yes, and, and how long have these schools been Chair. existing? In fact, in the seafarers, in the, in the Magna Carta for seafarers, I also inserted a provision prohibiting any member of CHED and any relative within the fourth civil degree to be in the board to own or have any interest in any maritime school. Because that has been a common practice as well. Karamina mga may ari ng skwelahan na either tiga CHED o tiga Marina. Retired, ex, o galing doon. I mean, parang mga polis lang yan na karamihan nasa security agency, it's also a conflict of interest that should not be allowed to. But anyway, Ma'am, your robust um, objection and reservations are noted. Um, but again, the direction of the committee is subject to plan the wisdom of the plenary if they will confirm the decision of this committee would be um, to grant, um, to, to um, recommend section four um, to um, the plenary for its consideration. Again, my defense of this provision will be along those lines for us to try it out. If if it is not um if it does not work, then we can revert to choosing either Ched or Marina. But again, it cannot be both. It cannot be both. And even the IMO, they recognize Marina. Exactly. Um so this is a somewhat of a Solomonic decision of instead of dividing the baby, simply Sama na lang kayo support. You have one vote each. Now but I recognize your reservation with respect to the other courses being offered. Um, so, Commander Robotal, um, yes. said may have a point with respect to the other courses that would not really be included under um, 
the jurisdiction for CFIMO. Um, um, so, can we limit um, institutional autonomy to certain courses being offered? But Shed and yeah. Marina will still be there with right. respect to the other courses, like the ones on engineering. Kasi, example, who will... Wala pa naman PRC yung maritime engineering, correct me if I'm wrong. Ano mangyayari sa graduates? Kailangan ba mag-board? Sinong gagawa ng exam? I mean... Yeah, that, that's exactly uh, no, the point. These are complications. Uh, uh, um, even naval engineering. Sino? So, magkakaroon tayo ng um, animal na engineer na hindi duman sa board? Can we have? So yeah. non-board passer, naval engineer, non-board passer, um, because there is no PRC organization covering these courses. That's that's, that's true, sir. Sir, uh, if I may enlighten uh, the chair regarding uh, the uh, status of PMA, uh, PMA in 1967, uh, uh, President Justado Macapagal converted, signed the law converting Philippine Nat National School into Philippine Merchant Marine Academy, and in that law, it embodies the two major uh, degrees, Bachelor of Science in Marine Transportation and Bachelor of Science in Marine Engineering. And that was the start of uh, professionalization of our profession. May board ba um, At that time, sir, it was under PRC. Yeah. Under PRC? But, but our law exempted PMMA graduates uh, from taking examination of providing us uh, automatic license for third mate and fourth marine engineer upon graduation. That is the reason why after graduation, we were able to uh, practice immediately and became officers. And uh, uh, the, I think the, the wisdom of that our... That law is still effective today. That law is still our charter, sir. Oh. Yes, it is still effective. It just so happened that when 8292 came, uh, I, uh, naging uh, yung specific law, it's now covered by the general law. I don't know how. But uh, we are still fighting for it. It's an ongoing yeah. debate. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. The specific law governs over a general law, later law governs over an earlier law. It's um Yeah, that's right, sir. Kaya may sweldo ang abogado, kaya kumikita ang abogado dahil yung away na yan, hindi pa na settle case to case yan. So, so but anyhow, uh, um, that is the start of the uh, professionalization. Naging bachelor's degree na ang ating mga maritime, ang mga seafarers. Before that, it, uh, we were only associates, mga hindi pa mga uh, bachelor's degree. In 1990, when CHED was established, in 1992, CHED was established, PMMA was already there and uh, we are offering two bachelor's degree already. So when they entered and became uh, uh, the Commission on Higher Education, they requested us to submit our curriculum. And uh, that curriculum became the basis of all the curriculum na nag offer ng maritime higher education in the country. Uh, tayo po ang basis niyan. So, okay na, uh, uh, Well, that is, that's actually the... Actually. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, why, why reinvent the wheel? Uh, Ayos naman, di ba? And... Uh, uh, modesty aside, Mr. Chair, the uh, Philippines became the maritime manpower capital of the world. Well, it's because of the government's vision na magkaroon tayo ng professional seafarers. And that is because of PMMA graduates. When the PMMA graduates became officers of the international ships, the ship owners, nag-hire na rin sila ng mga ratings. Kaya dumami ng dumami yung ating mga full crew seafarers. And because of that, tayo ang pinakamarami ngayon. Pero pinakamarami in terms of number of seafarers. But the officers, hindi po tayo ang pinakamarami. Mga ratings pa rin. But PMMA is still nagpo-produce na mga officers. And in fact, most of our graduates started their own maritime schools kasi hindi na kayang su supplyan ng ibang ano, napuro. Sabihin mo na lang kay Popoy, Cindy... Chairman naman siya ng board, member lang yung Marina, lamang pa rin ang shed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chairman pa rin naman siya ng board. So whatever whatever institutional autonomy, however this would be developed, yes, sir. would be under his um, chairmanship. Exactly, sir. That is the... Uh, 
what we also sir, like, naman, sir. Sir. coach sir actually ni hindi coach sir yung ni hindi coach sir yung superintendent eh ang coach sir pa nga DOT eh. ako Now on the status of national again my response to that will be um again most countries only have one school usually run by the government in fact we are unique in the sense that we have the most number of schools or one of one of the countries with the most number of schools so um if we're headed towards having only one mamaya maya marami tayong kikreate ng mga community college na gagawin nating state college ano ba naman yung magparami na lang tayo ng branches nito to make it more accessible to na at least sigurado tayong makaka-board ng barko. I mean, I think we're headed towards that. If both Shed and Marina will do its job, most if not all of the schools will, um, except for about a handful, will most likely be disenfranchised and will be disaccredited. Um, kawawa lang yung mga studyante kasi nag enroll na hindi naman pag-graduate, akala nila okay na yan, hindi pa pala. Kawa naman yung mga magulang na tumataya. Only to find out that it's not enough to graduate, it's not enough to land a job. Sa so, pakisabi habang nasa, na, dumating na ba si Bopoy? Bukas ba, no? Nasa Turkey pa ba? Istanbul. Tinext nga ako, eh, sabi ko. Um, buti na lang, wala kapag nag-healing kami. <laughs> Any other points, Cindy? Yeah, uh, sir, uh, I would like to point out lang po that with respect to maritime program, there are seven SUCs also offering maritime programs. So yung determination ng, um, we of course recognize that PMA is one of the oldest, siya, oldest, no? Uh, but the, as of now po, there are uh, other seven, there are seven other SUCs offering maritime programs, Mr. Chair. Good. And therefore, PMMA should take that into account in establishing branches so there won't be duplication and redundancy. Anyway, pakonsulo mo na nga si Popay na chairman siya. Subject to the proposed amendments um, submitted by the PMMA, um, all of which are well taken and the points raised by the chair in so far as clarificatory amendments to the proposed bill filed by Senator Tolentino, Chair hereby approves um, Senate Bill Number 2469, subject to those perfecting amendments, and thereafter, Secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee um, report for routing to the members of the committee. So ordered. Item number three, um, an act converting the Bao Community College in the municipality of Bao, province of Umarina Sur, to a state college. Um, who will comment? Uh, yes, Mr. Director Muyong. Mr. Chair, uh, on House Bill Number 9314, mm. an act converting the Baao Community College in the municipality of Baao, province of Kamarisor, into a state college and appropriating the four. Uh, Ched has reservation on the intent of the bill, considering that there is already an existing state university in the province, which is the Kamarisor for the technologies with pending conversion to state university by virtue of Republic Act 11283. Let me cut you short. So, is there a suggestion to simply make this a campus? Uh, well, uh, it will be subjected to the board. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. Did so you state this when this was approved in the House? This was deliberated in the House, the House bill, yeah. Mm. Anong position on Chad uh, We still have the same reservation because of the existence of the Camarinesor Polytechnic uh, Will Camarinesor be the first province in the entire country that will have two state colleges or universities? Or may ibang probinsya bang may dalawa? Maraming probinsya na mayroong... Oh, eh, pinayagan niyo naman pala yun eh. Hindi. But they had been, ano, they had been there... Uh, Nag-object din kayo doon, tinuloy lang uli ng kongreso. Yeah, we, uh, most likely, uh, we are having reservations on those creation of uh, uh, converting uh, community colleges into a state college. What... What is the policy behind it? Bakit ayaw nyo magkaroon ng dalawang SOC um, state university in one province? Uh, the creation of new state college entails more funding for the government. So hence, it is suggested that instead of creating a new state college, additional funding could support could be allocated to CPEC so that 
it may be able to expand its programs and student support services to cater the constituents of the municipality of Baao. But hindi na alam niyo suggest maging campus. Uh, campus ng Comarinisor Polytechnic uh, uh, State <laughs> College. So, uh, on the other hand, Mr. Chair, uh, the LGU may consider integrating the Baao Community College as a regular campus of, uh, exactly. yes, of the Comarinisor Polytechnic State College, subject to the concurrence of the CPSC Governing Board. For the record, um, what other provinces have two state colleges or universities? Would you know? Well, uh, I'm from Iloilo. In Iloilo alone, we have uh, several state college. The Iloilo Science and Technology University, West Visaya State University. We have the Northern Iloilo State uh, uh, State University. We have the ISOFIS. Ilonggo ka? Ilonggo ako, sir. O ako, Bicolano. Wala pa kaming ganyan. Di ba kami pwede magkaganyan din? Uh, in Bicol, <laughs> there is, uh, of course, Bicol University. Of course. Yeah, uh, Cibiswa. Yes. Yes. Um, kaya nga, so what else? Ano pa ibang probinsya may ganyan? Well, uh, a lot of provinces have uh, several state colleges in the province, yeah. And I'm sure Congressman El Rey, who's a veteran legislator, knows this too. And his intention really is for the national government to fund this. Claro naman yun. I don't think he's hiding that. That's really his intention. Di ba? Hindi nyo naman pera yan kung ipapasa, edi papunduhan. Pag hindi, edi hindi. Di ba? No, your reservations are duly noted. Um, however, um, I am of the belief that the member of Congress who um, who um, filed this bill, specifically Congressman Villaferte, would know better what his district and province needs than I or you may, and I and I or you will there's no chance that I or you will know better for them, um, given that it is a local bill and given that we're all based here in Manila, although I go back home to Source Lagoon regularly. Um, Chair, before Chair adopts or approves House Bill number 9314, Chair would like to amend Section 24. Nine, another? Nine, three, one, four. Section 24 of the aforementioned House Bill to insert the phrase on the second paragraph of Section 24 to insert the phrase the province of Camarines Sur and before the word municipality or the phrase municipality of Bao, as suggested by Congressman Villaferte. Subject to that amendment, Chair hereby approves House Bill Number 9314 and instructs the committee secretary thereafter to prepare the responding committee report for routing to the members of the committee and plenary debate. So ordered. House Bill Number 9315. Um, this is the JH Real Estate College. Same. Mayroon na bang state university rito? Mr. Chair, the office... A a conversion to, into a yeah, university. Conversion into a state university. We have standard provisions already, right? Yes. Tinanggal natin yung period, hindi sila magiging university unless they comply. Is it here? It's here, right? Yes. Uh, hindi lang yung wording natin. Ayusin na lang natin yung wording. Yung typical, clear yung typical wording natin, di ba? Na we're, uh, we're authorizing the conversion to university but it will not become effective unless said approves it or allows it. Yeah. Well, natin na if I may, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, the office uh, ob interposes no objection to the intent of the bill provided that the college has fully complied with the CHED exactly. requirements no, we, for university. We have a standard provision already, right? Yes. We already have a standard provision which came from CHED. We'll include that in the bill. Um, can you also make specific reference to RA 9292? 8292, sorry. 8292 in the bill that it has supplementary application similar to what we've done in the past, remember? Okay, subject to those um, clarifications, House Bill number 9315 is hereby approved. Committee Secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report. Um, House Bill number 9316, San Pedro Technological Institute. 
is this a community college too good morning mr chair hold on ma'am hold on ma'am hold on ma'am um yes director muyong it's a test that yeah huh? this is a, a technical vocational school which is uh uh to be converted into a state college What's Chad's position on this? Uh, Mr. Chair, the office reiterates its reservation on the conversion of a technical vocational school into a state college due to the following concerns. There are already two existing state college universities in the nearby areas, the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, San Pedro Campus, located at United Bayanihan Proper Road, San Pedro Laguna, which is less than six kilometers from the SPTI, and Cavite State University Carmona Campus, located at Malui, Baduya, which is less than eight kilometers from the SPTI. So massive funding support is needed to enable a technical institution to comply with the requirements for the offering of tertiary education programs, particularly to the faculty qualifications. Is there a is there a similar test the school that was converted into a state college in the past? Yeah, yes, never know. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah. Which one? Uh, Would you know? Yeah. In Surada, South Tabato, Mr. Chair. Meron uh, na Yes, and there are a lot of uh, bills in the house that is also being. Uh, no, that is, I can allow this. Director Muyong, again, subject to compliance with said requirements. Yes, Mr. Chair. Eh. Yeah. If they don't comply, then wala kang mag wala sila magagawa. They have to comply with 8292, right? Yes, that is why we reiterate and we emphasize that they have to comply with the requirements of the public that Act 8292. Yes, thank you. Standard provision naman yun eh. Um... Ms. Maribeth, just for the record, why are why do you want to do this? Um, <clears throat> good morning, yes, Ms. Maribeth. Yes, Apparently, morning, you're only the second case na ginuato. So, what makes you special, and why do we have to do this? Okay. Uh, good morning, po, everyone. Uh, first of all, we would like to express our appreciation to the author's resolve relevant to House Bill Nine Three One Six. Uh, joining me online today is the City Administrator of San Pedro and the Vice President of the San Pedro City Polytechnic College, Attorney Henry Salazar. With your permission, Mr. Chair, may I respectfully request that he be recognized. Ma'am, I'll only recognize one. Who will speak to answer my question? Why are we doing this? Any one of you can answer, um, but only one will answer. May I be recognized, Mr. Chair? Um, I'm Attorney Henry Salazar. Attorney um, Henry, yes, you are recognized. So um, why are we doing this, Attorney Henry? Um, actually, uh, to be candid, uh, Mr. Chair, we were just um, advised of this House Bill uh, number 9316. Um, I don't know if uh, the previous um, um, director of uh, SPTI was advised of this. He, he just recently reti uh, retired last year. Uh, but um, the city government uh, was not advised of this bill. Um, hence, um, it is um, we, we, we will supposedly manifest that uh, we be given time to further study the bill and to submit our comment and or position paper on the matter. Actually, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, to give a further background uh, on SPTI, it is already incorporated. Uh, there, there was a, an ordinance last year incorporating SPTI to San Pedro City Polytechnic College as uh, it is the direction of uh, our city mayor uh, to put up a pamantasan for um, university here in San Pedro. Uh, and, and we are already in the process actually of uh, having it um, accredited with CHED. We are just um, preparing uh, the necessary requirements for that. Out of curiosity, Attorney Henry, hindi magakampi yung mayor at saka yung congressman. Uh, the, you cannot, hindi sila uh, magakampi. Hindi ko sinabi magkaaway. Hindi ko tinanong kung magkaaway. Ang tanong ko, hindi magakampi. 
Noong nakaraang eleksyon. Baka naman ang kampi na eh. So the answer uh-huh. is no. Right? Hindi magkakampi, right? Because this will never happen in our province. That the congressman will file something that um, hindi alam ng LGU. Because magkakampi kami rin eh. So, I presume here in this case, there was no coordination made. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. And this bill is um, contrary to the direction that the city would want to take. And that antecedent facts have occurred um, to recognize it as a campus, ba? you said? Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, further discussion of um, of um, House Bill number 9316 is hereby deferred to give time to um, the LGU of San Pedro to comment um, on the same and will be scheduled in the next hearing of this committee. Good enough for you, Attorney Henry? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number six, moving on. Cotabato Foundation State University. Um, Chad, same subject to? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Subject to the compliance yeah. of Chad requirements for okay. a university status. House Bill number 9317 is hereby approved as discussed. Subject to compliance with Chad rules and mention of 8292 compliance in the bill to make it clear. Makilala State College. Ano to? Same? Mr. Chair. Same may reservation ka, pero subject to. Uh, this, uh, Makilala Institute <laughs> of Science and Technology is, is a local college. And, so uh, parang community college nga, same as the one yeah. in Kamsur. We have reservations. Tingin ko uh, nag-usap-usap yung mga congressman eh, kaya na yun na yung technique nila eh, para, para hindi ma-burden yung mga munisipyo. Same comment as um, House Bill number 9314. Right? Sabaw. The comment of Chad, same as um, in House Bill 9314, is duly noted. However, again, the answer of the chair would also be the same. Chair respects the wisdom of the member of Congress with respect to knowing what's best for his or her own locality. Chair, therefore, approves House Bill number 9318, subject to the provision that they shall comply with Chad rules, regulations, and requirements before it can be a state college and compliance with A292 should be specified in the bill as well. For the record, to clarify, in other words, whenever I approve these house bills and it becomes a law, this is simply authorization to become, okay? This does not make them a state college automatically unless they comply. Unless they comply the exactly. requirements. And the difference, again, since I became chair, is we're now removing the period. Na alam mo dati, ang daming bill ko, utang na loob, dahil lumipas yung limang taon, ang matatapos na yung limang taon, babalik pa rito, para lang baguhin yung limang taon. So we have since removed it already to unburden Congress with such amendments. All right. Zamboanga del Sur State College. I'll do it for you, um, Director um, Muyong. Same comments as in House Bill 9314. Same order as with respect to House Bill 9314. And the committee secretary is directed accordingly. House Bill number 9642. Director Muyong, same comment as in House Bill number 9317 on the Cotabato Foundation State University. Same order with respect to House Bill number 9642 as with House Bill number 9317. Sabi sa'yo, Admiral Abudal, matatapos tayo kasi pare-pareho lang to eh. Item number 10. Ito. Um, N E S Ano? N E N E U S T. Um, who do we have for any N E U S T? Yes, Doctor Hugo, are you there? Yes. Uh, good after, uh, Good morning, Mister Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, the provincial government of Cabanatuan City um approached me 
and had reservations with respect to in case you're dissolved, the land will go to the city of Kabanatuan. Where did that provision come from? Did it come from you or your congressman? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Uh, the bill, this was actually initiated by our congresswoman. Uh, and like San Pedro, the congressman and the congresswoman and the mayor are not allies. Hindi ko sinasabi magkawa, ya? Are not allies. I'll take that as a yes. Now, ma'am, this is what I will do. When we asked you and researched, you have eight campuses, none of which was donated by the city of Cabanatuan. So what we will do is amend the provision to simply read, shall revert to the agency because DEPED also donated land to you, LGU, or private owner as the case may be. Kasi who knows, in the future, baka may private owner na magdonate. So if the school is dissolved, it will simply revert to the owner, meaning the donor of the land. Yes, Mr. Chair. That's uh, well taken. Okay. Now, said, same position as Gotobato or what? Different? Ay, ko si Cindy ang magsasalita. Different to. Game go. Mr. Chair, yung additional lang po, sa use na po ng uh, 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 the word system, Mr. Chair. Where are we? What section are you referring to? Um, one section one po, Mr. Okay. Chair. There is a reference for a university system, and as we have already uh, indicated in previous hearings, Mr. Chair, there's I already see, uh, CMO po. Mr. This Chair. is with respect to PUP, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, and then yun nga po. Actually, yung iba po. Section one po, Mr. Chair. Asa yung system di ko makita sa section 1? Where is it? Nueva Ecija State University. Lala naman na. Ah, yun. Ayun, last line. Hindi iba to eh. This is different from PUP. Eh? Integrated into a university system is... Remember, PUP, nilalagay nila sa pangalan eh. Yes, Mr. Chair. Pero yung concept pa rin po, Mr. Chair, that it will be a university system po. Meaning? Um, meaning, Mr. Chair, that since we have already a CMO on that, Mr. Chair, that it should be subject to our guidelines on the creation of a university system. No, no, no. Our, our discussion was it doesn't really give anything new. Um, meaning, and it's um, malabong, meaning, Wala naman significant na binibigay, makakagulo pa eh. At the end of the day, it's the board that decides anyway. And the judge chairman is the chairman of the board. Diba? Hmm. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kaya ka po, since renaming naman po ang purpose po nila and strengthening, why indicate pa po the word system in, in that bill po, Mr. Chair? So ang position lang po namin is that to delete the word uh, system po, Mr. Chair, so that it will not confuse also Yung with the other concepts that we have in shed, Mr. Shed. Dr. Hugo, integrated into the university to be known as NESU. Uh, I, Last line uh, of section one. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ma'am, can we include into a comprehensive university? Would that suffice? Ma'am, ako na oo. Oh, oh. uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Done. Section 1, last line, second second and last line, integrated into a comprehensive university to be known as NESU. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other comments? Subject to that amendment, um, House Bill number 9319 is here by amendments, rather. House Bill number 9319 is hereby approved. Committee Secretary is directed to effect those amendments. And to thereafter prepare the corresponding committee report. Um, and um, 
routed to the members of the committee for plenary for endorsement for plenary debates. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Item, you're welcome, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Item number 11, Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, Ali, Aliaga. Ma'am, say niyo pa rin pala to. Yes. Aliaga, Cuyapo campuses. An act of establishment. Kahit yung mga parehas ng dati natin. Yes, Director Muyong, who will comment on this? Uh, the office has no objection to the intent of the bill, Mr. Chair. However, again, uh, we have to reiterate that full compliance of the institution, including the certificate of program compliance for its program offerings with the requirements for a regular campus. It's in the bill, right? Is it in the bill? Wala. Section, section five of the... Okay. Yeah, Nakalagi section five of the bill. Yeah. Okay. Naman but we have here some reservation, Mr. Chair, uh, because there is a, a existing uh, campuses. And hindi nyo papayagan kayo naman. Nasi sa inyo na yun. Huwag mo na ako idamay dyan. Kayo naman na mag-a-approve eh. Subject to your compliance eh. Hindi, pa-comply nyo. Hanggang awayin kayo nung congressman. <laughs> Di ba? Well, we submit to the wisdom of the committee. Hindi, meaning, it will pass through you anyway. Yeah. Same... Is this going to be the same discussion, uh, Attorney Moyang, with respect to 9302 and 9772? Yes, diba? Right? Yeah. Okay. Chair hereby omnibusly takes up House Bill number 9635, 9302, and 9772 pertaining to the Nueva Ecija, pertaining to the establishment of regular campuses in Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, Eastern Summer State University, and Eastern and another one in Eastern Summer State University. The same is the same the same are hereby approved omnibusly, subject to the clarification that it is um in accordance with said um guidelines and approval and compliance with the relevant provisions of RA 8292. I cannot Dr. Lee Moyong. Hindi naman ako away sa agent sila. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Establishment of test the training centers and assessment centers. Chair will omnibusly take up House Bill number 9017, House Bill number 9307, 9509, and 9636. All seeking to establish a test the um, office. Um, now, as with previous test the bills, I may ask um Ma'am Linda. May assessment center ba sa Tarlac, Paniki Tarlac, Naval Biliran, Rizal Nueva Ecija? Kasi yun lang yung tatanggalin ko rito. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Meron pong mga existing na uh, assessment centers sa uh, nabanggit po ninyong mga lugar. Meron ako pa lagi. Kasi nagsususpend lang ako palagi. Gawin mo rin yun. Chair recognizes the presence of um, Senator Bato de la Rosa. Good morning and welcome, sir. Um, so tatanggalin ko lang yung assessment dito. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, because that's uh, As in our previous your bills. previous bills. Chair hereby orders that um, these bills be amended to remove the assessment part of the center being sought to be sought to be established, um, and for only to test the training centers to be the one that will be created via the respective um, house bills, and for the bill to be amended accordingly. Having effected those amendments, um, House Bill number 9017, 9307, 9509, and 9636 are hereby approved. Given that the committee has approved bills of a similar nature um, since we resumed this Congress. So ordered. For some administrative matters, sorry, I have to go through this. Senate Bill number 2495 is similar to Senate Bill number 2448, which we heard last October 18, 2023, which is being routed 
So, Chair, hereby orders that House Bill, Senate Bill Number 2495 be consolidated with Senate Bill Number 2448 and to be taken into account in connection with that bill. Senate Bill Number 2509 is similar to House Bill Number 8439, heard last September 4, 2023, which was deferred pending said submission of the inventory of composition of all stocks to determine the impact of the measure. May utang kayo sa akin. Inclusion of and representation of non-academic and teaching personnel. Kindly submit it. Ilang boards, UP kasi meron eh. Non-academic at saka may staff at saka faculty region. I asked for an inventory of all the SOOCs. Ilan yung may ganon, ilan yung wala. Just for us to see the pattern. Because kung, kung yun ang direksyon, 8292 amendan ko. Hindi lang ito. Diba? We will submit, Mr. Chair. When? Yung huling hearing ko, September 4, mga limang buwan na. <laughs> Within the week po, Mr. Chair. 15 days. Mid-March. Okay. March 15. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill Number 9334, similar to House Senate Bill Number 2319, heard last September 4, shared here by orders, the same to be consolidated and taken into account with the said um, Senate Bill. House Bill Number 9308 is hereby ordered, consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1269 and taken into account in connection with Senate Bill Number 1269, which we heard last October 25. We are awaiting um, TESDA um, locations ng um, assessment centers. Ma'am, do you have it with you? Kindly submit it to us. Pero iniisa-isa ko naman sa hearing. But I just want a, I just want a copy, an updated copy so that we can act on it accordingly too on our on our end, on our part. Yes, Mr. Chair. We will submit for... When, ma'am? Um, Same, ma'am. March 15. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chair. No, the, before that. March 15. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Senate Bill, House Bill Number 9309 is hereby ordered consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1742 and taken into consideration in connection with 1742. Can we act on this, these two already, ma'am? Can you submit to us specifically on these two House Bills? One in Mangkayan, Kibungan, in Benguet, and the other one in Bacara, Ilocos Norte. Uh, all assessment centers, Mr. Chair, right? Kung okay. meron dito o wala. Okay, Mr. Chair, we will... Kasi kung wala, isasama ko yung assessment center. For kung meron, field. hindi ko isasama yung assessment center. Understood, Mr. Chair. Kindly revert to the Secretary directly and chair here by orders after consolidation for us to draft a corresponding committee report as soon as TESDA submits the needed information. Mr. Chair? Yes, um, Senator Bato. If, if I may, uh, I just would like to manifest that... Uh, just for the record of this committee, that uh, this representation is uh, in receipt of a letter from uh, Governor Umali of uh, Nueva Ecija, uh, citing his opposition to some uh, provisions of uh, House Bill Number 9319 under consideration of this uh, committee. And uh, I would like to manifest my support to his uh, opposition. We took that into account. In fact, I was on the phone with um, Governor Romali yesterday, and we agreed on the provision that we inserted by way of an amendment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Specifically, for the information of Senator Bato, that um, in case of dissolution, the land um, of the campus in Cabanatuan will not go to the LGU of um, the city of Cabanatuan, but will revert to the province of Nueva Ecija, which is the donor of that parcel of land. When we further researched on it, um, NEUST has eight campuses, one donated by DepEd, one donated by the province, and six donated by the respective LGUs where the campuses are located. So the provision we inserted was, um, that in case of dissolution, the land shall revert to the LGU agency or in the future if a private owner donates, or private owner that donated the property, as the case may be. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That would be just enough for, uh, for them. Thank and you. And ironically, for the record, the city of Cabanatuan did not donate a single parcel of land uh, among the eight campuses of NEUST. So um, it's just fair that we do it the way Governor Romali wants it. But hindi rin naman pwedeng ibang campuses na iba nag-donate, hindi yung probinsya. Sa kanya rin mapupunta. 
So, kung sino yung nag-donate, babalik na lang sa kanya. Tama, Mr. Chair. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, maraming salamat. Thank you, Senator Bato. Thank you, thank you. Nasaan na tayo? Um, ah, in Tesla Training Centers, right? Pakirulay na lang. Kailan? Puro pala puro, puro, ito ganun eh. Anyway. House Bill Number 9508 is hereby consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1735 under the same circumstances as the previous ones. House Bill Number 9507 is hereby consolidated and taken into account in connection with Senate Bill Number 1902 for the same reasons given. And sa House Bill Number 9643 is hereby consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1772 and taken into account in connection therewith um, for the same reason stated. Can you hear me? What do you mean? Local government is the same as justice. It's good. Thank you, Senator Bato. Lana? Ma'am, Ma'am Linda, let's show you so that we can get out of here. Can you see? Yes, Mr. Chair, I believe we already submitted uh, some of those uh, house bills po, uh, were in uh, the assessment centers and training centers are located. It was dated October 6, 2023. Oh, yeah. So Thank as you, soon Mr. as as soon as the answer Sorry. is given, the secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report on those house bills. Mga kulang na lang, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other matters? Sabi sa inyo, hindi tayo abot ng lunch eh. May gusto ko pang sabihin, Cindy? May gusto ko pang sabihin. Mr. Gusto mong on the record time magkwentuhan kung bakit tinanggal yung mga commissioner ninyo off the record time magkakwentuhan? On record, off record, Mr. Chair. Okay. <laughs> oh, sige, on record time. Um, as chairman of the Committee on Higher and Technical Education, Chair would like to know the status of the commissioners of CHED. How many are remaining? What are the reasons for either their preventive suspension or removal? And how are they parceling out the workload, given that they have divided the seats in the respective state colleges and universities to the number of commissioners? Mr. Yes, Chair. please, Ma'am Cindy. Um, as to commissioners, we have uh, previously, Mr. Chair, we have, of course, four plus five, four commissioners and one chair. As of now, Mr. Chair, we have three functioning commissioners. One has been dismissed by the Office of the Ombudsman. Um, one has been preventively suspended by the Office of the President. The charges uh, in the um, uh, complaint by Mr. Chair for Commissioner Derry Lag um, are grave misconduct, simple uh, grave misconduct, uh, violation of RA 3019, um, as of uh, anti corrupt anti practice, anti anti -graft 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 -practices, practices Act, um, simple misconduct, and uh, grave abuse of authority, Mr. Chair. Neglect. Also of the uh, neglect or abuse of authority, Mr. Chair. Sino ulit nireklamo ko? Nakalimutan ko, may nireklamo ko kay Popo eh. Sino nireklamo ko? Sa? Sino yung commissioner yung nireklamo ko? Libre po, commissioner. Kasama ba siya ron? Ay, yes, Mr. Chair. Siya po yung na-dismiss uh, uh, na po ng office of uh, the ombudsman. Um, as of now, Mr. Chair, kasi we have 114 state universities and colleges, so they have now... 40, 40, 80. I think, think for 40 po yung dalawa, and then yung remaining po ay kay chair. Is that physically possible? Um, mahirap po talaga, Mr. Chair, taking into account po that the first quarter now of the meetings of our state universities and colleges would require acting on the reclassification of the faculty members of our state universities. Now, I'd like to place on the record and kindly relate, Chad, this concern. Um. One of the complaints against Commissioner Libre was that he was conducting more than regular meetings, calling more than regular meetings at the expense of the state college or university. And number two, that he was being accompanied not only by members of his family, but also more than enough staff um, that the commissioner can actually, actually needs, again, at the expense of the state college and um, university. So perhaps it's time that said issue a memorandum regulating what will be charged against the state university and college in cases of meetings held on site. Um, and um, what will be charged against said and what will be charged against the personal account of the said official. But to be fair, I'll give you an example. Some congressmen, some senators, um, I never go on official trips, bring their wives on official trips, but it's only the member of Congress that actually the Senate and the House pays for. 
yung asawa niya, yung anak niya, yung isasama niya, siya magbabay doon. Pero kung pupunta naman talaga sila doon, at least yung pamasahe niya, libre na. Kung mag extend siya after the convention, edi, alam mo yun, nakatipid-tipid naman ng konti. Kaya nila ginagawa yun eh. Um, but um, in this case, hindi eh. Binabayaran din ng state university and college eh. And number two, if the hearing, if the meeting is going to be conducted within said premises, para nyo ng awa, wala nang per diem yung commissioner, wala na dapat yun, di ba? Meron some some sucks give some sucks give that's why I when I appointed my representatives to the various sucks I told them that they are not allowed nor authorized to receive anything from the sook I learned about this because I sat in a meeting of MSU once inabutan ako na envelope no sinilip ko may 5000 sabi ko but 5000 lang to para saan to? Sabi nila, for them to yun. Sabi ko, so binalik ko, um, that should not be the case. It's part of our job. But apparently, it's a practice. Um, so, kindly regulate it too. Meaning, di ba, kung nasa Manila naman yung meeting, di ba, tra- parte ng trabaho ng taga-DBM yun, minsan may DTI, minsan may DA, especially from CHED. Sa opisina nyo na mismo, eh, but may for them pa, dapat wala na, di ba? Now, these practices existed beyond before um, Popoy's time. So, perhaps he, he may be in the best position to look into it. Especially the debacle that Libre faced. So, it's about time you addressed it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chair, actually, Paul, uh, before pa po sa dismissal ni Commissioner Libre, the Chair already issued po a memorandum to our commissioners specifying that yung, yung the ethics, uh, the uh, the code of conduct that they should be doing in the conduct of uh, board meetings, which include, of course, yung not more yung um, having meetings more than what is specified under the law. Because under sa RRE 292 naman po, ang nakalagay po ay may conduct um, quarterly meetings, not more than four, four, uh, two special meetings, Mr. Chair. So, yun po yung nakalagay din po sa memo ni Mr. Chair. And then, as much as possible po talaga, doon sa CHED ang meeting or doon po sa uh, state, sa campus po ng State University po na concern, Mr. Chair. Doon po sa per diem, um, yes, I recognize po, Mr. Chair, um, ang pinafollow pa po is that yun na nga yung that, uh, yung DBM rule, uh, regulation that, you know, you may give per diem even if yun na nga po sa Diba? Chad, opo. Yes, Mr. Chad. Kung nagbiyahe doon sa Sook, sige, may per diem. Okay lang yan. And to limit the number of people with him. He can bring as many as he wants as long as he pays for them. The airfare, di ba? Ngayon, kung kotse yung susundo sa kanya, makisakay doon, okay pa rin yun. Wala naman problema eh. Pero yung airfare lang, yung transportation costs and per diem, wala na dapat sila. Hindi na dapat kasama. I remember now what we complained of kay Commissioner Libre. Yung isa sa mga reps namin in one school, dinadala niya palagi, binibitwit niya kahit saan, at pinapakilala niya ang rep ko. And bypassing our actual rep, dahil yung mga notices ng school because he sits in the board, are being given to my supposed rep that he chose by himself and not to my actual rep. So we wrote Popoy um, to that effect. Last year, I think. Anyway, so good luck sa mga... Ko- Commission. No, so yung suspended, hindi pwedeng appointan. Yung dismissed, pwede nang palitan ni Presidente? <clears throat> uh, or on appeal pa? I don't know po if he made an appeal to the Court of Appeals, I think na po dapat, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Yung sa preventive suspension po, we are already conducting a fact-finding po, Mr. Chair. Kasi there's a directive from the Office of the President. 90 days lang eh. Opo, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, it will lapse po ng April po, Mr. Chair. So yung dismissed, hindi pa pinipilipan? Walang balak pa po. Sa, it, sana po meron, Mr. Chair, kasi nga po nahirapan na po talaga. Ginawa niyo yun sa dating commissioner niyo eh, kay Viterbo? Uh, Sige, sino? June Vitriolo. Sir, sir, sa executive director po yun na position. <laughs> hindi, pero similar. Opo, yeah. Diba? May kaso siya, ina-appeal pa niya, pinalitan na, overtaken by events, nanalo siya, eh may, may naka-appoint na eh. Hindi, di ba? Yan yung nangyari doon eh. Hindi, kabats ko yun eh. Matanda sa akin yun na, pero kabats ko yun. Late yeah, yeah. sa naglo. Mr. Chair, to, uh, to be transparent, ako po yung pinalit. Ano, ano? Ako po yung pinalit. <laughs> no, I don't even know. But that was the situation. So, it can be done too. For this commissioner, di ba? Di ba tapos na yan? Wala na yan eh. That has been settled already, right? 
um i think um court ruled that his um position was moot di ba kasi na filipan na yung position eh wala na okay congratulations then anyway thank you for your time um i've taken up too much of your time already and i'd like to thank everyone for um your inputs your comments and your patience good morning thank you so Hearing much is Mr. Chair. Thanks so much. At marami pa po doon nakapila, sir. Saan ba kayo?